when, where, how, and why did record sales become the standard to measure an artist's greatness? I think it's time we have a conversation about not only the history of record sales, but why the numbers don't actually matter. The idea of a record label and being able to purchase records as we know it today dates back to the 1890s. But like most new technologies, buying a record back then was very expensive, so very few people could do it. If you wanted to own a piece of music that you really enjoyed, you would buy the sheet music so you could play it yourself at home. Sheet music back then is the equivalent of the modern day single. And if you really liked an artist, you would buy their songbook, which was the equivalent of the modern day album. Up until the early 20th century, sheet music was the primary consumer musical product. In 1921, radio fans were all earphones listening to a pioneer station, WHN. Crystal Set Explorers hear such performers as Miriam Batista, child movie star. It wasn't until the 1920s with the rise of radio and artists performing live that more artists began to record records. The recording contracts back then weren't that much different than what they are today. Bigger artists such as Enrico Caruso would get a recording fee as well as royalties on the sales of their records. However, most artists just got a single flat fee. For example, in 1923, Columbia Records gave Bessie Smith $200 to record Downhearted Blues. I'm gonna hold it and tell you, then come on the mother, man. The record would sell over 2 million copies, but Bessie wouldn't receive any of the royalties because she like many artists of her time, just took a flat recording fee. And it is said that her record sales single-handedly brought Columbia Records out of bankruptcy. And like many artists of her generation, she didn't care about how many records she sold because she was already giving her money up front. These trends would continue into the 1930s and 40s. Artists such as Mahalia Jackson, Ella Fitzgerald, and Billie Holiday would sell millions of copies of records, but they aren't getting tracked and they aren't really getting any royalties because they were paid up front. And in some artists' cases, they didn't even receive an upfront fee. They would get paid for their recordings and their work with furs, cars, and jewelry. The RIAA was created in 1952. But it isn't until 1958 that the certification system was introduced. And at the time, there was only one certification, gold. And a gold record meant you sold 1 million copies. I repeat, a gold record meant you sold 1 million copies. The good thing about the gold record is that after nearly 50 years, there's finally a standard and measuring stick in place that helps artists track their sales and achievements in music. The downside is that this standard really only applies to recordings from this point forward. So what does that mean? Artists such as Mahalia Jackson again, Little Richard, and Bessie Smith who reportedly sold millions of copies of records, they don't get certified because these standards were not in place. People often ask, how do legacy artists have 40 and 50 album catalogs? Well, the answer is simple. The industry back then was structured a lot differently. This whole concept of an artist releasing an album every two to four years is very new. Up until the late 70s, artists were releasing between two and four albums of new material every year. And you might just get a greatest hits collection on top of all of that if you were lucky. For instance, in 1964, Johnny Mathis released four new albums and a greatest hits collection. 
So this means that back then there was a small window of time for your record to achieve gold sales before it was time for you to move on to the next project. The gold record will remain the industry standard until 1976. Due to the rise in popularity of disco, more records were being sold than ever. So, the IRAA introduces the platinum record, which now indicates that an artist has sold 1 million copies. The gold record is now demoted to indicate sales of 500,000 copies. So what does this mean? Anything before 1976 that sold at least 500,000 copies is not certified. And all the records that we do know sold at least 1 million copies under the gold certification system would not get updated to a platinum certification. For example, in 1974, Aretha Franklin releases two albums. At the top of the year, she releases Let Me In Your Life. The album sells over 950,000 copies before she releases her follow-up album. To this day, the album remains uncertified because when it was released, the only certification available was gold to indicate 1 million copies sold. So under the updated system, she technically has a gold record. But remember, she would release a follow-up album months later. So sales tracking for this album were stopped to track the new record. So it's safe to say that Aretha missed out on a platinum record certification. <laughs> Two certification system would remain in place until the early 80s. In 1984, due to the success of Thriller and the introduction of CDs, a lot of music is being purchased, so the IRAA creates the multi-platinum certification. So you know what this means. Essentially, everything before this time period has not and will not be bumped up to multi-platinum sales. So just imagine how many artists are under or uncertified. And something people also don't talk about is that record labels have to pay to track and certify sales. And many labels just do not want to pay that. For example, Motown Records. How many records have you done? Yeah. Oh, about seven right now. Do you mind if I ask you, if you, if you do, don't say it, but do you mind if I ask you how much money you've made? Mm, well, I wouldn't want to say right now. <laughs> but you've made, you've, you, you've, uh, you sold a lot of records. A lot of records. <laughs> the Jackson 5 was one of Motown's highest selling acts. But Motown was not a member of the IRAA and they did not pay to have their artist sales tracked or certified. So it isn't until the Jacksons leave Motown in 1976 that they get their first gold record. James Brown is another good example. Out of an entire career, he only has two gold records because his label did not want to pay to have his sales accurately tracked and certified. The lack of certifications and accurate sales is how many artists of this time period ended up in financial trouble. And have these songs made you a wealthy, wealthy man? Well, it should have, but I was cheated, I was used, I was exploited, you know. And if you still aren't convinced that record sales are a little sketch, think about this. Up until the early 90s, record labels and Billboard got their numbers by calling record stores and asking for their figures. 
So just imagine how easy it was for a record store owner to say that an artist sold more or less than they actually did. Exactly. In 1991, we enter the Nielsen sound scan era, which was said to be a more accurate determinant of sales figures because it tracked numbers directly from the point of sale. But two things happened during this time. On one hand, you have artists like Melissa Morgan, who released music during this transition and had sales numbers lost. But on the other hand, it further showed discrepancies in album sales. For example, the IRAA will let you certify an album based off shipment, meaning if your record label shipped 2 million copies from the factory to the stores, you would get certified double platinum. For example, in 1995, Michael Jackson releases his double album, History. Because it's a double album, each disc counts towards a record sale. The album was certified five times platinum based off two and a half million shipment, but SoundScan only reported 1.3 million copies were actually sold. See what I'm getting at? We don't know how many records these artists are selling. Now that we're in the digital and streaming era of music, we see firsthand how sketchy record sales are, but also how easy it is to manipulate them. Many fan bases have figured out ways to manipulate streaming platforms to get their favorite artists to the top of the charts. With our arms open wide. And don't forget the legacy artist. The artists who sold millions of records in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, who are getting millions of streams still to this day, but they aren't getting the certifications that come along with it. So I hope you guys realize that an artist's record sales cannot determine their importance and contributions to music. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Until next time.